Hello everybody, Vicky here. If I sound a bit strange, if my voice goes up and down or too soft, I'm actually laying on my bed um, with my iPad, so hopefully it's going to work out all right. Okay, Roxy's Weekly Challenge number six. In front of me I have got wrapping paper that is a reproduction print of Jane Austen's quilt that's on her bed in the cottage where she lived the, the mo most of her life. So up in her bedroom, they've got the quilt and it's got like a glass cage around it so people wouldn't touch it. So while we were there in the gift shop, I bought some gift wrapping and I haven't done anything with it. Uh, so it's white on the inside. So I'll get to that in a minute. Oh no, I think I'm doing that now, sorry just explaining that yep it is indeed white on the inside and it is wrapping paper so it's not the thickest so out of my trusty paper stack i've just pulled out a piece of 12 by 12 um, varying degrees of hideous i have got a stack of paper that i've now put through the coffee vat so that rather than wasting all these 12 by 12s that won't ever get used I'm dyeing them and then using the backs of them. But as a happy little mistake or result from some something, some of the fronts that look not so good white or the colour scheme that it was when they went into the vat don't look too bad now they've been coffee dyed. So this one in particular is still going to be uh, the coffee paper. So it's about probably about a 125 GSM. So that's going to give a little bit of structure and strength to the wrapping paper because it is a folio. Sorry, I didn't say what we were doing. I'm so far behind, I need to remind you. So what I've got happening here in number six is it's a folio with um, different types of papers in it. Now, when I saw Roxy or Rachel from Roxy's Creations do this, I thought, oh no. I've got no good papers and I don't need this. I can't see the sense to this. I just don't know how I'm going to pull it off. I've got nothing for the front co cover. And as we are known to do, I just put so many barriers in front of it. It slowed me up for a little while. Plus, I've had a few other things going on. If I get a chance, I'll just tell you a little bit about that. But for the moment you'll see now I'm getting another piece out and that did not look nice before it went into the vat but I decided that I liked it and it didn't look too bad against the outside of the print because remember it's not actually sitting side by side it's I just it's backed it's the inside lining so I decided I made an executive decision and I decided that I would put the green floral on the outside. Now that green is probably a little bit more muted than what it's showing up. Now I started off using my little squishy tool um, and it's dirty, I need to give it a wash. So I went to the, the card to, to just squish all the glue around under the paper and get a good adhesion. Now this was white and a blue. So it, it looks just like a uh, mattress ticking and uh, I really like, as a quilter, I've uh, used it in the past and I just like, I like the mattress ticking look. Uh, it's it's T-I-C-K-I-N-G, ticking. And it's what the old mattresses used to um, always be covered in. You now that striped fabric. So now we've got, oh no, yeah, no, the tea. <laughs> the coffee vat is not a miracle worker. Nothing could be done to save this particular paper. So it's going on the other side. So it just means it's a paper that would never have got used, that now we can actually feel a little bit pleased about ourselves because we're using up stuff that just finds its way into our craft rooms and never leaves. So I'm trying to be, you know, the, our, our use it up. And this is going to be my 100 makes and use it up. Tick, tick for me. So three ticks in one for me this time. 
I know I have to do a bit of a um, story so everybody knows about my, my 100 makes and use it up one time at a time. It occurred to me that it's all well and good using a hashtag, but the hashtag actually has to have somewhere to go home, I think. And I don't think I've done an explanation on, on the way I've interpreted the rules. So I've decided that I would line the top of it with a bit of the off cut. I didn't want the paper going over that crease because I don't like the creases getting bulked out. But then, like I said, the, the paper I'm using isn't that thick. So I thought that it would do, it could use the, the extra strength. Plus, it just does look nicer at finishing, it's finishing, finish it, it finishes it off. Sorry, it's been a big day. A big big day and now so I'm just just doing the lining on this and there's just a little gap there for the fold so it keeps the fold free so it will fold easily but then we've given it a little bit of extra strength and, and my initial thought was this is I don't really need to line that because it turns down but because this is what it is it's going to be folded it will open up so that sign will eventually be seen. Now, as I was saying, I carried on a right royal proper treat about the different papers, but before I go into that, I decided that I would sew around my folio covers. I like, um, I'm a sewer, I love sewing. And this is a little small machine that I've got for my paper. And I'm not getting a lot of sewing done up the other end of my room. So this just keeps my little heart happy that I've got something to put through a machine, any machine, it doesn't matter. So I've just gone all the way around these with a zigzag. Just, I don't know, just to make sure that the papers stay um, glued at the, the edges and for strength. So I've done that. And I've explained before that I don't really like doing back stitches. I don't like the look, but more than that, I worry that when I've got a thin piece of paper, like this wrapping paper, by going backwards and forwards to anchor the threads off could actually rip the paper. So I just bring the, the front thread through to the back and tie a little knot in it. And then I put a bit of glue on the knot I, I usually keep, you know, like maybe a quarter of inch thread there. Uh, but more often than not, it doesn't stink, stick. <laughs> so when I'm looking and finishing off and checking everything off when I've done the project, I'll, if, if the thread's sticking up a little bit because it hasn't stuck down, I know I can just cut it off just right down near that knot not because I've put a dab of glue on it or you could leave some threads hanging as well um, I don't tend to do that I'm trying to be a little bit better with it but I'm not there yet so now I was just carrying on about the, my carry on about not having right, the right paper and you know I haven't got the proper stuff to do it with because we don't we don't get a real lot of old printed material here in Australia because we're just not that old. But it's surprising what we come up with when we have a little look around. Now this, the coffee dyed paper that I've got there, that was a happy little accident when I coffee dyed some envelopes. And I put the, the that's just baking paper to the oven and I put it between the envelopes so that the glue wouldn't stick and I just thought I'd keep using that paper every time I needed a lining and then I thought well actually <laughs> actually darling it, it looks really good it'll make great little pockets and it makes the most awesome crunching noise so anyway getting back to what I'm doing here I've I've got a whole bunch of papers out 
and I've put them in piles and I'm just going, oh, there you go, I'm, I'm explaining about the baking paper now. So now I'll talk about the paper that you just saw. It, it really is surprising when we have a look at what we've got. So the comic strip there with all the colours, that's actually German. And I've got a magazine page just for a bit of colour. So what I've done is, is I've put mine together as a collage kit so that if I'm going to be going away, maybe a retreat or an overnight or a couple of nights away, I can grab one of these folios, pop it in my bag with some glue and, and a substrate and we're good to go. So I'm thinking about things in the collage way of thinking. So how will I tell you what I've got? So I've got two pieces of coffee dye in each piece. Like I said, that comic is a German one. That is a very old dictionary, so it's authentically old. Um, those newspaper-looking things there, they were the front pages of some books that got thrown away. Um, the pictures, the, the images that you just saw, they came out of a visitor's book that had never been written in, that was picked up at the, the second-hand place. And, and after all my carry-on about, oh, woe is us, we just don't have any sorts of interesting paper, I had a look around at what I've got, and guess what? We do. So there's dictionary paper in there. Like I said, I'm trying to figure out how many are actually authentic. I was going to just fold them in to make them fit, but because I've bulked this out a fair bit, I've decided that I would cut off to size to, to try and alleviate a little bit of the bulk. Now, I go through and I trim the bottom of these until I actually wake up enough to go. I've got a big rotary cutter sitting on my hard left. Uh, all I have to do is just wedge across there and it'll do it in one go altogether. So I don't all, always think. So that's just a bit of... Uh, graph, pa graph paper that was in a, a, um, a, a school book, school notebook, and there's our German. So that doesn't quite fit. Now, I think just by doing one side was enough, but I kind of like then had to do the other side just to make it even. I, I try and fight that in my brain that wants everything exact, but... Obviously, I don't always win. So this is the dictionary. No, I don't think it is. That's an, an, an old book. So I've got two, two old book pages in here. One being a dictionary. I'm not sure what the other one is, to tell you the truth. So that's one put together. So now... Yeah, I collated them all. And I'm not, I'm not particularly worried whether or not all the paper goes in to our to our cover the same way because they're there for collage. Nothing's going to be done in order. So we'll be just grabbing them and getting them as we see fit. And the thing I like about this idea, thank you, Rachel, is that for me, like I said, I've got collage on in mind. I can just rip pieces off the bottoms and the side of it without having to take them outside to undo undo the folio to get to the get to the papers that I can take pieces off this for collage and still have the actual original piece stuck into the folio so then I don't end up with all sorts of loose bits of paper flying everywhere when we're on the go again. So that was just one little thought with that. And I, I get pretty tired these days, so I turn to collage and, and I, I love doing it. It's very calming. So this is, this is really something that will be very handy for me. So I'm just, just going through now. So that was the page. So that's a magazine book. 
there's two different types of marble paper there, but they're well, they're the same marble paper in two different colours, I should say. I'm just going through now, I'm sort of sorting out what I want to be the front covers or the front papers so that they can be seen from the top. So I've just popped them there and I'm wondering, yeah, I need to sort of put something in between. I was going to separate the two coffee stain papers but then I decided I'd put them back so that I would know that they were both there together instead of just seeing one and thinking there was only one in there and that's the only only paper that there's a double up on so I'll put them all together that's a, the book the book page that's there on that is a very old and yeah it's just a visitor's book that was never used that I got for a dollar or 50 cents or something from the book pile at the second hand at the charity shop and away we're good to go. And I'm just fitting them in there so that's the second one done and I don't think I've done three and four on, on camera I'm not sure let's have a look what we're going to be doing now okay so I've done that I've got all four of them together now what I've done is, is I've dropped those holes down. You can see I've dropped them down quite a way and that was a mistake. Um, and I should have thought about it a bit more. Should have watched Rachel a little bit more closely, whatever we wish to say. But because I've dropped them down so far, it meant that you'll see that when I go to fold them, the first fold can only be like half fold so that the second one's got enough space so it can tuck up under underneath the the top face top fascia there so it it they they do stay folded and, and they stay closed and it works the same way as the you know the matchbooks the little matchbooks you used to be on to buy you used to get them they used to have them sitting in ashtrays inside clubs or inside a pub to advertise as advertising so I'm deciding that I'm going to do two with brads and of course all, they're all higgledy piggledy in together so I've just got to go around now and see uh, which ones I like best and and because they're not together I have to find pairs so we'll just fossick through here. The one that I really like was an antique gold. But I didn't think I had any more than one of them there. And that's a copper one, that one. I, I quite like that. It's got like a little bit of a shine across the top of it. And then there's another, it's it's actually a brown. It's it's not it's not like a, a metal colour. It's it's a it's a it's a brown. You can see it's a bit flatter. With with the copper and with the old gold colour, it's it's got that little bit of a, a shine in the middle of it. As you can see, a little bit of that in the brown one, but it's quite flat. So they're all three different sorts. I'm just trying to see. Like it's it's no biggie if we can't find them because I have got two. I've got quite a few gold, plain gold ones, so. It, it shouldn't be too too difficult. So I thought that the two of them with with the brads and the other thing I like about not having to open and close those brads out every time I wanted to get a piece of paper out, it means that I'm not weakening the arms on the back of them. And you don't sort of like get that metal fatigue and, and them snapping off because there's a lot of paper there to use working from the bottom up and I'm quite sure if you wanted to you'd do a gentle tug on a piece of the paper that's there if you just tugged and, and sort of like jiggled a little bit I'm pretty sure you'd get the paper out of there without having to undo the brads but then again you might want a bigger piece and not have it ripped. But you can see that I'm quite a ways down there. I should probably be halfway between the top and 
and where where I've got them now. But it's it's not the end of the world. It, it reduced the amount of space I had to do any decorating with it. So I'm just going through now and sorting out what we're going to do with the tops. And, and so I hope you all are doing very well. It's been a bit of a rough couple of weeks for me. And it's not too tragic, but it's not been easy to get through. Um, today is the second Tuesday in a row that I've had to go to the hospital and have procedures done under anaesthetic and then there was one on the 6th, so the 6th of March, last Tuesday and today I've had, so it's three hospital visits, three anaesthetics, three procedures, but I come home, I've been able to come home every day, so it could have been worse. So I was just starting to get the first one on the six didn't bother me at all. It was, it was like not a not a horrendous thing to have done. But last week I'm only just starting to get about a little bit better. And I had to go in and have the same thing done on the other side. So I'm still sore and tender and have to be careful how I move on the left side. Now I've got to go through the worst of it again. So tomorrow I'll probably be on the bed. Thursday I'll be up and walking around like a lost soul. And then slowly I'll increase. But then on Friday, this Friday, and then on Monday, I have to have um, ultrasound guided needles into my fingers and thumb joints. So... I don't think that's going to be terribly pleasant at all. So yeah, I'm I'm in the wars at the moment, but this is what this is what it takes to keep my body up and running. And having said all that, I do acknowledge that I've got it pretty good. There's treatment for me, and and I've got great medical, uh, great doctors. The staff at the hospital are just so lovely. If it keeps going, we'll be on each other's Christmas list, we've decided. Um, we, <laughs> we all know each other's first names and, yeah, husband's names and whatever now. We're, we're just, it's quite the social outing. It's a bit funny, really. We, we have to laugh where we can, don't we? So what I ended up doing here is, is I, this is before I realised that I'd put those holes down too low. So I folded, I folded it up and I put a crease in it. Oh no, we've still got one more bow to go. I'll explain that to you in a minute. I don't know that I did it on camera though. I got the scoring board out and everything and I gave the back cover and I scored the back cover because now it's, it's a little bit thicker and I got the papers out of the way so I could get a sharp fold on the paper because that's what's going to hold it into place and then fold the paper up only to realise that I couldn't have the first fold that deep because of the restrictions I've given myself up the top where the holes are but there was a way around it and I'll show you what I did to, to sort of like get over that so you see where I folded it so deep it still hasn't occurred to me that there isn't enough room to get the second fold up there. But anyway, there's always a way around things, isn't there? And so I'm just flicking through just so that you can see what papers are there. So there's a green marble end a grey. So I thought that was a, even though it's an advert from a, a magazine, I thought it was a really good um, paper because it's got lots of colour in it and then you could flip it over and use some of the text if you wanted to. So that's just a normal writing, cheap writing pads that you buy in the back to school bins at, at the local stores. And I've just coffee dyed it. So anything and everything gets coffee dyed in this place. Graham said if he walks too, 
closer to the vat as he goes past. He, he'd just as likely be put in it. I can't lift him up, so I think he's probably right. So I might have actually, well, actually, actually, I think, I think what I've done is, is I've, I've edited out where I have, I edited out where I had the fold in the wrong place, but you will see that that fold stayed in the in the paper because I did it I did it all proper <laughs> had a nice sharp crease there with the bone folder this is if your hands do get sore this this project for me uh, became a little bit painful and a little bit difficult for me to do just with pressing the, the bone folder down so then you can see how that just tucks up no, the one that I folded incorrectly is actually under the one that I just put up the top there. But anyway, there's always a way around things. The old Vic would have tut tutted, got very angry, pulled the whole thing apart and started again and shot that, that cover into the scrap, scrap drawer to try and reinvent it reinvented but these days it's like I have to keep in mind that we aren't striving for perfection I think all of us do do the very best that we can do but there are times when we just don't need to be getting too upset about things some things it's just Find a way to disguise a mistake to you know turn the turn the mistake into a design feature. Um, of course, we don't want anything what we've made fall apart. I'm not talking about that. I think that that it's important that we're going to be making things. We do it to the best of our ability. We don't want things to fall apart, especially if we're either a selling them. Or just as importantly, giving them away for gifts. We don't. We don't want to give give away rubbish, do we? So I'm just trying to get a fold, a crisper fold on the outside. It. I just found by doing that, it made it easier to get the pages on the inside to fold. Because, like I said, there's a pretty, there's a pretty thick wad of paper in there by the time you fold it over a couple of times so that one's done so we'll just pop that in underneath and I was really pleased that even though I did come down too far I think because the it is so far down it's it's putting pressure on that fold as we tuck it up inside so it, it, it did work out quite well. So I suppose I could say, well, you see, it's just the way I designed it. <laughs> I'd be I'd be telling fibs, though, wouldn't I? Um, Roxy, I believe, is up to challenge number 12, um, which is double what I'm doing now. The, a lot of that was my own silly fault, not being able to have a think outside the square and realise that I could make up some some nice little folios without having the same the same as everybody else or the same as Roxy. It's just it it looks so good and and yeah, I guess I don't I don't know why it bothered me because usually I love to follow what other people have done and to be taught different things and I'm very appreciative of those that, that do do videos and put them out there because I've learnt so much. I tend to I tend to try and do it a little bit different. Like I'll watch a video just long enough to get the gist of what's going on and then I'll turn it off and turn it off before the decorating is done because I don't and I don't think I'm hoping that other creators that I watch a bit of and, and and I give credit to the people that I've I've looked looked at. I just think that I'm sure that those who have made it and everybody else 
don't want to see exactly the same thing. It's all like paint by numbers. So just trying to do a, li a couple of little things differently so that we all, we all have just that little bit of different input which makes everything more interesting. It's certainly, it definitely is not because I think I can do it better. I just, I can do it a little bit different is, is, is all I'm saying. So I'm going through now and uh, I'm decorating these. I'm going to keep the decorations on these very simple because they will be on the go, so which means in and out of a bag of some sort. I've put a trim of lace across the front and I really like that because because of the amount of bulk that's in the papers that tuck underneath the top fold, it's sort of like jutted the top fold out a little bit. And by putting the 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 lace along that edge, it it disguises that. It takes away the oh that sticking out look. It it sort of like just just work. So I've just put a simple little cluster up there in the right hand corner and the lace and that's actually, there's that word again, that's all I'm going to be doing with them to keep them a little bit simple. Plus, once again, because I snookered myself by dropping those, the brads down, the holes down so far, plus so far out, I restricted the amount of space I had to do any sort of like little cluster, a little, a little decoration. I was thinking about putting one in the second fold left hand side, but then I thought it's going to look silly when it's open. So I opted for simplicity that I wanted this little working working beast it's going to be a beast of burden so to speak our little folios but i did want them to look pretty and when all these are done and the paper the the cover is all worn out and absolutely had it i'm pretty sure we'll be able to take that lace and the brads off these and be able to repurpose them upcycle however you want to put it onto another project. Now the reason why, that's Glad Bake, that's the Ecru craft colour that they've got it out in now. It was only ever out in the white, like you saw with the bags, I, uh, the, the tea dyeing I did. And they've brought out this colour and it, it's, I love it. So all I've, I've got some a few pieces cut down or ripped off just around me to, to stop, um, to, to just like a, um, what do you call them, drop sheet. So by putting that in between, under, tucking it in underneath the flap and down over the paper, it means that when I'm gluing the, the lace on, it's not going to stick and, and rip any of the paper that's in our folio, which I suppose is a little bit funny since I've just spent, what, 10 minutes saying that these, these are put in this folio too to be ripped up in the collage. But, you know, it's, it makes sense to me. And once again, I'm just doing a simple little uh, cluster up in, in the corner. Didn't want anything too big, too bulky. Didn't want anything that was going to sort of stick out too much because, like I said, we'll be... We'll be well, I'll be taking these off with me at different times. And mm, so that's all I like to do. And so I feel a little bit bad that I'm only up to number six. But it's crazy in this house. It's like there's, there's two humans and there's three four-legged kids with attitude in this house. And it is near on impossible for me to get quiet time. So between my hospital visits and would you believe my computer got yet another virus. Uh, not not happy, we do have virus protectors on everything we've got here. So Graham had to uh, delete everything again and 
reinstall everything. So that took, I think, three days. So that was three days out of the life and times of Vic and her creating. And um, then with the medical. And, of course, the medical and the, the, the dumping and the recreating of the computer didn't line up. <laughs> it would have been good if the three days I was out, out, three or four days I was out with medical had have lined up with the three or four days that I was out because it had a, had a um, virus. It didn't quite work that way, did it? But anyway, what happened? Well, long story, long story to get to this point. What happened was is, is I thought, right, I'm not feeling too bad. I can sit up for a little while. And the computer's up and running. Thank you very much to my wonderful husband for that. Uh, but in between everything getting uninstalled and getting everything else up and running, the microphone was overlooked. So <laughs> I come up to edit, to lay on the bed and, and edit the, the video that I'd done. And I've gone to cordless e e thingies, earphones, headphones. And I bought, I bought like two with the charger and one very small dog, no names, Louie, got hold of the, the, the first ones I bought were white. Well, I had them for 24 hours. Well, not even that. I got them, bought them home, used them when I was in bed that night thought I'd put it up on the, the bedside table, but alas, it fell off or never made it. I didn't check it. So in the morning, the very next morning, she was less than 24 hours from purchase to dead. Somebody had chewed one of them up completely to pieces. So <laughs> I've been running and I, tend, I get my um, headphones from the hospital cafeteria because it's about the only place I ever go. So I've got a new set tonight. So anyway, getting back to, I only had the old ones. And I'm thinking, oh no, it's it's no good now. I don't have any luck with headphones. And it turned out that there was just no, no audio to hear. Now, see what I've done there? I've put the roses. Remember I said with the first one I did, I folded it and the fold was just in the wrong place so no way I could get around it until I came to decorating. Because I thought, well, you know, they are for you, Vicky. You will survive if you... I might sell a couple, I don't know yet, but definitely one or two of them will be kept for me. And I thought, well, I'll just keep that one for me. I'm not going to mind. Then I thought, well, you know what? I deserve something as pretty as what, you know, as, as well made or attention to detail that I, I put up to, in our shop for people to buy. I deserve that. I deserve that as well. So that's when I come up with a little row of roses and it's such a sweet little trim. Now, it's probably no point me telling you where I got it from because Sue has it. I got it from Sue at Paper Inspirations, but she hasn't been able to get it. She's got the big ones, as big roses, but she has not been able to get hold of any more of this one, which is a shame because I love it. <laughs> I might have bought a few cards, so I've got quite a few before I run out, so I need to be using it because that's the whole point of this year. Gosh, we're going to get sick of hearing me say that. By the time we get to the end of the year, trust me, I think I'm almost over it already. So just doing that little, little cluster there, and I think that's the four of them done now. So anyway, I was like, with my, with my earphones, thinking, oh, I never have any luck with them. I go through earphones at an alarming rate, and I think half the problem is... I listen to a story, an audio book when I go to bed at night and I lay and pull and, and squash the headphones when they come out. 
So I thought, oh, I've broken another lot, but it was just that there was, there was actually no audio to the to the film, the movie. So that was not a movie; it's a video. So that was a bit funny. So anyway, here we go. We have got our four, in my case, collage folios. Good to go. Thank you very much, Rachel, for the challenge. Um, I am aware that I have to get my skates on, but I will continue to be making these. And I don't really want to skip any because I get a bit funny about skipping stuff. It's like you're either all in or you're all out. <laughs> you're either going to start and do it all or you're not going to start and do nothing. Now, I tend, yeah, Graham and I both tend to be boots and all kind of people. So I'm just not 100% sure when this video is going to end. So once again, thank you, Rachel. And be kind to yourselves. And please be kind to the person standing next to you. We have no idea what people are going through. We have so many lonely, marginalised people that if somebody smiles and says a simple hello to you in the supermarket, you could be the first person that they have spoken to for goodness knows how long and the only person today that they've... they've for you to say a simple hello back, how are you, hope the weather isn't too bad for you, means everything. So be kind, take care of yourself, and I will catch you next time.